In the most recent version of JavaScript, you can define a function using a shorthand uh, syntax called arrow functions. And arrow functions, since they are just a shorthand syntax for creating a real function, and functions are used everywhere in JavaScript, as you know by now, you might not be surprised to hear that there are many different ways that arrow functions are used in JavaScript, and there are many different syntax variations to boot. So what I want to do is start simple, and I want to look at a few practical applications of arrow functions, but we'll start using them as frequently as possible from this point on, and you'll begin to see them pop up just about everywhere. All right, so you can see that I have a file called arrowfunctions.js that I've already created, and I want to create my very first super simple arrow function. So here we go. I'm going to create a function called hi. I'm going to set it equal to a set of empty parentheses, what's called the fat arrow operator. So equal sign in a greater than symbol after it to kind of resemble a fat arrow, I guess as opposed to a thin arrow, which has absolutely no meaning in JavaScript. This fat arrow then will point to a body defined by an opening closing curly brace. And then we'll do console.log howdy. Okay, so far so good, right? One line of code, an entire function declaration, and we can just call hi. So here we go. Let's go um, uh, node arrow functions. And we get a simple word howdy printed out. Okay, that's easy enough. So let's comment that out and move on to a slightly more interesting example. Um, we can actually go let hi. And inside of the opening and closing parentheses, we can accept an input parameter. So what these really are, instead of using you know, the keyword function, we just get rid of the keyword function. But this remains, and it allows us to define an input parameter, name. Inside of, or after the fat arrow, and inside of the body, I can go console.log, we use our, our special backtick character, and we'll go howdy, and then dollar sign, open the closing curly brace, name, and a few semicolons to the ends of some things here. Really probably don't need this one per se. Now let's call hi, Bob. Howdy Bob. Okay, so you can see that all we're really doing here is just creating again a shortened version of a function. And we don't need the keyword function. We just go ahead and start with the opening, closing uh, parentheses to define the area where we can add input parameters. The fat arrow points to the body of this, of this arrow function. And inside of there, we can just do whatever we wanna do just like we can in any normal function, even reference input parameters like we've done here. All right. Now, up to this point, we've just been kind of creating what I call void functions. They don't return anything, but what if we need to use the return keyword? Let's create a different version of this. So we're gonna create add, add equals, here we go. We're gonna allow this to take two input parameters, A and B, and we'll just do something super simple. We'll hear once again, but we will use the return keyword, A plus B, and now we can do console.log, add seven, three, and we get 10 printed to screen, okay? Can you see this same basic structure? Here we're accepting two input parameters separated by a comma, here we're still referencing those in that body that we've defined using open and closing curly braces. Use the return keyword, it'll get returned to uh, our method uh, as, a, as a return value of our method call. And here we're just passing in numbers, getting that value back and printing it to screen. Okay, so far pretty easy stuff, right? Now, you might be wondering how could I ever use this sort of thing? Um, what is its 
pertinence. And so I think that one of the ways that I in, uh, see them using being used the most is whenever you need to run a function over each element of an array. And so let's use our let names equal, and you'll recognize these names once again. Okay. This time, we're going to call the map method. Now, this happens to be a, uh, a method defined on the array built-in native object that we learned about, but we'll talk about more of these helper methods built into the array built-in native object in an upcoming lesson. But the map is a pretty cool one because what it allows us to do is to basically iterate through each element of an array. And when uh, we it iterates through, it will actually allow us to call a function. And this is a perfect spot for creating right inside of here, one of our arrow functions. So in this case, we'll say you're going to iterate through each element of names. Whoops, I need to use the right word here. Names, right? And so here we're going to create an arrow function that accepts a name. And what we'll do is kind of to marry these two ideas together, console.log and then howdy name all right and you can see basically in one line of code i was able to map each element of the array to our arrow function it passes in the name to the arrow function in the body of the arrow function now we can simply operate on it just like we were doing previously. But as a result now, for every single element of our array, we're getting a console.log with our little message. Okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's take this one step further. As we continue to build on this idea. Let me grab uh, this line again so I don't have to retype that. And then I'm gonna say let i equal zero and uh, actually, let me just grab this line too because I want to do something a little bit more interesting because I want to show that you can actually do a little bit more in a single line. Like for example, here I might increment the value of i and then use i here in the body. But now I'm essentially doing, you know, two commands or two statements inside of the body. And I'm not saying this will you'll do this very often, but it's certainly possible, all right? So now let's do, uh, save that, get back to that. And so now David one, howdy Eddie two, howdy Alex three, howdy Michael four, all right? All right, let's continue to build on this. And now let's use the return keyword kind of in the same doing the same sort of thing here. So we'll start with names. Uh, in fact, let's go var transformed equals names.map. And then I'm gonna borrow some of these pieces here again. I'm just gonna borrow that. except I'm not gonna call console.log, I'm just gonna return that string. Let's see if we can get this all kind of lined up here. Okay, so I'm re gonna take every name in names and I'm gonna return howdy plus the name. And now I'll do console.log the entire array that is going to be returned from this and saved into transformed. So here we go. Whoops, I got to spell log right. All right, and so you can see that what gets returned here, because we're returning multiple values, they get added to 
essentially an array. And now you can see on each element of the array is the literal string that we construct inside of this map function using an arrow function to do the construction. And those individual names are now transformed and saved into a new array. Instead of just David, Eddie, Alex, now it's howdy David, exclamation mark. Howdy, Eddie, exclamation mark, and so on. All right. So arrow functions are simple to create, and they're just a shorthand version of function expressions. They really are useful whenever you're working with functions on arrays, like this map method that allows us to map each element of an array to one of our arrow functions and then basically execute that function against each element of the array. Uh, and so we'll see some other examples of this in some upcoming lessons, all right? Pretty cool stuff. All right, we'll continue on in the next video. We'll see you there. Thanks.